So thanks, Skylar. And as per usual with Lean Frontiers and Skylar, I know you do most of the legwork. No offence to Jim and the others, but yeah. thanks very much for getting this um, set up for us and much appreciate it. And welcome, Pat. Thanks for joining us. Pat's the Chief Operating Officer with Story Construction in Iowa. I've known Pat for about four years. And uh, what's impressed me about Pat um, as time's gone on is that Pat's uh, an senior executive who walks the talk. So there's really no more introduction necessary from my point of view. Pat, can you tell us a little bit about Story Construction, uh, who you are, who the company is and what they do? Sure, thanks. I appreciate uh, the opportunity today. So Story Construction's a, a general contractor. Uh, we're names Iowa, so right kind of middle of the state of Iowa. Uh, we do about $120 million worth of work a year. Uh, we've got about 150 employees. Uh, most of the work that we do is within, I'll say, 70 mi 75 to 100 miles of Ames. Um, we're approaching 90 years. It'll be 90 years here next year. So uh, started as a family-owned business, has been employee-owned for about the last 60 years. Um, so we do the typical general contracting stuff. We have uh, craft staff who does uh, who do concrete, steel, precast, uh, carpentry trade. So uh, we certainly subcontract folk, uh, a lot of work, but um, uh, so we have anywhere from oh, 12 to 15 or 16 jobs going on at any one time across, uh, kind of across the state. So. Yeah. Thanks, Pat. <clears throat> Thanks for the overview. So we met at CarterCon, uh, four, five, or six, you know, um, about four or five years ago, three, four years ago. So can you start by telling? And I think that was your first one. Why were you there? Um, so we started our lean journey nine years ago, um, and principally around a. Ten, and so I said, "Okay, uh, we need to figure this out." Um, uh, went to that, and I think I, we, you happened to sit down at the table we were eating lunch at, Oscar, and, and met you, and, and I'm glad you did because it's it's uh, created a good relationship since then. So I just wanted to find out more about it. Um, I felt there was, you know, what I'd read, uh, things made sense, but we were struggling and how. Uh, we wanted to use it, and we just need to be better educated on on how to do it and and what to, what to understand. So sure, sure. So in the introduction um, and on the website, I've written or you know we added. <coughs> pardon me. The, Uh, system we use. It's EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System. That's also uh, built on understanding where you're going, where you're at, and then chunking things off and, and taking daily and weekly actions to get there. And so we started that. We started a lean journey and just had to, had similar patterns. And um, and then as we then learn more about Kata, it really kind of has the same pattern. Our planning model has a pattern about where are we going to be in 90 days? Where are we today? What are the obstacles? And so all of these patterns uh, resonated that there's really the same pattern. It's got a lot of different vocabulary, but the, but the same pattern is happening. And I've become increasingly frustrated over the years around having different kinds of programs with different kinds of approaches. And um, it never all really feeling like it fit together. Um, so as we've been on a lean journey, Kata, um, uh, was fitting together. Mike and I went to a Shingo Institute that was fitting together. I went to some TWI stuff and all of those have patterns and the patterns effectively the same, different perspectives, different, uh, uh, some different vocabulary, but it's, it's principally the same pattern. And, um, as we would go to these other seminars, whether it's Katakan or anything else, we would hear things and and we discovered those things in our journey. And um, 
uh, and so it 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 became clear to us that we were on the right path. And we could, if we went to some of these just because other people had figured things out and we, we were okay borrowing from others and accelerating the pace at which we could incorporate this stuff as opposed to just discovering it all by ourselves. So, yeah. And I think that's, a, <clears throat> I think that's a really, a, a really important factor in this. And we tend to, uh, and I'd like you to talk to him a little bit more about that, that path of discovery. I think, um, and you know, I think we're learning more and more that copying what other people do doesn't necessarily work. And what I understand that, that and what I see you guys doing is, uh, is you're on that path of discovery. And I know I've got to be, I've been conscious at times to um, let that happen. I think that's so important uh, that you're on that path of discovery within a couple of walls, if you like. Can you just talk more about some of the some of the positives and negatives of that path of uh, that part that you know, journey of discovery. Yeah. Um, so here of late, we've um, we've really shifted how we deploy um, deploy anything, and we we moved on to giving a team, maybe it's a project team or another departmental team, uh, uh, spend a little time with them and say, hey, we would like to investigate or we'd like to to experiment around improving. This, that, or the other thing. We've got a project not far from our office here. It's, we're doing steel and concrete, and we wanted to try to better understand how we prepare our people to go to work and make sure that they know their assignments every day. And they've they've just spent a lot of time. They're excited about it. They spent a lot of time trying to figure that out, and they've made great strides. And so, um, so that's exciting. Our the dilemma we're running into is is their energy about their discovery is driving them farther and farther. And now we're trying to understand and experiment. How do we take their energy and their learning and take it to other places um, to not necessarily eliminate the opportunity for others to learn, but at the same time, take advantage of something, the stuff that they have learned. And so yeah. it's one of our current experiments about how do we, do we deploy learning from other places um, so we can accelerate some pace, but, but again, not, not, um, diminish the opportunity for others to learn themselves and yeah it's a real juxta it's a real juxtaposition isn't it how do we take the learning from one group and infiltrate it into another without depriving that second group of the opportunity to learn right and um, we haven't figured it out yet but we're we're trying we're trying two or three different things on some different programs we've got going um some kind of mandated kind of um, activities. Uh, some we're just letting be just uh, uh, just kind of natural and organic, and um, and so we're we're going to see kind of how that works. If there's a if there's a different types of learning that that are shared and deployed in different ways, and we'll we'll see what we come up with. So yeah, yeah, I, <clears throat> I've um, I struggled to find it. I found it again about a year ago. But I remember a Mike wrote the video clip about uh, that I saw about seven or eight years ago, where he talks about, and he does it with his hands. He does exactly this with his hands. We need to get people, allow people to experiment within the box of risk. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, your job as a leader is to make sure they stay within that box of risk and keep safe, in essence, in more ways than one. Uh, can you comment on that a little bit, please? Yeah, um, I'd say with our organization, it's probably making people feel more comfortable about taking more risks. It's about yeah, right. um, we're kind of programmed to want everything to go go right, and we can get disappointed when something gets labeled as it it went wrong. And we've talked a lot in the last couple of years about about not labeling outcomes. Um, whatever happened happened. And and I don't I wouldn't say it's good or bad. It just happened. And and so how what do we learn from that? And then how do we reflect on that? And then apply that to making tomorrow better. Um, I, I talked to folks. I, we just want to get this much better every day. And if we do that after 100 days or 300 days, we will have made great progress without having it felt like we have made great change. Uh, we can look back on it and say, hey, well, yeah, we have come a long way, but it doesn't feel like we're making significantly significant changes. And particularly if they're the ones choosing the different actions or the experiments they take, it's 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 much easier for them to do it. That doesn't mean that we don't um, 
provide some direction and, and some encouragement and even some, uh, hey, we want to work on this, you know, specifically spend time with that. You know, we have a challenge around safety across the company that every, every one of our sites has got a, um, a, a, a kind of storyboard as we, as we talk about it, a, a, a grease board that we use to lay out the steps that, that a team can use to use the kata routine, the improvement routine to talk about a problem. And we want all of our job sites to work on um, getting people better prepared every day to be able to be safe and to, to have good production. And all of their situations are different. And so it's the same challenge in, for the entire company. And every job site is approaching their individual obstacles in their individual way. Perfect. There's two things that you've said there I'd like you to pick up on. One of the things that's always impressed me about you from the start is that you allow things to go wrong. Within the, I see you do it. Now, was that something that you always did as a leader or do you, or was it something that you realised you had to uh, had to uh, had to uh, change within yourself a few years ago, or was it always there? Do you think? Um, so probably coaching my two boys growing up and baseball and football was helpful because we didn't win all the games, and um, and so I always my favorite time was actually after a loss, and we would sit around outside the dugout and we'd talk about okay, what did we learn? And it was my chance to to share the game, but then also sh to help those kids grow up and be good people and. And I, um, I wanted to win. I mean, don't get me wrong, but but that was my way to help the next game we played or the next inning we played to be better. And so uh, that coaching has helped me as I've I've, I've been uh, been at Story, and and um, I have learned to 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 be less uh, quick to label outcomes. That's that's in the last few years, and just simply say, hey, what happened and why, and. Um, and then what can we learn and, and, and be more um, be more inquisitive about things. I, I tell people I've never been in any any I'm the smartest I have ever been right now. And I ask more questions and seek more help than I ever have. And so it's it's the realization that we can do more together if we engage with one another than than any individual hap will go by themselves. And, and and that's been our approach to Kata. We, we've done Kata th through principally started through teams and not individuals with an individual uh, coach and learner. We're too spread out. Um, it's too hard to administer. We're not all in the same same facility. And so we have had some coaches that have been a bit nomadic um, that help teams work on problems those teams are having, coaching them through that. We're moving now to more individualized career pathing, and we're using the Kata routine for that. Uh, the challenge is where they, where a person wants to be in three years in their career. Their current condition is where they're at right now. The target condition is in 90 days, what's the goal I want to obtain to get me to achieve my career plans in three years? And then supervisors talk about the with those individuals, the obstacles and the actions they take over the next 90 days to accomplish that. And so we're trying to drive it into individuals in that manner that's ultimately helping them grow their career. And so... I remember the, the second kind of kind of that you were doing a presentation and, and you were talking about job relations. And I just sat in some stuff related to kata, uh, the kata routine. I'm going, these routines are similar enough. We can do this to grow people. And, and now I don't have to have a separate program for career development. I can simply use this same pattern. And, and we're now trying to bring things together and, and to bring language together. So, it's the, it, again, it's the same routine. Let's get rid of some of the vocabulary so it's easier to explain. And if I can teach the routine in this situation, we can use it in all of these other situations and it indoctrinating people and getting them up to speed just, just happens more quickly. Yeah, and that's I think that's the point about it being applied universally, which is what I see you guys doing, is that you're using the, the scientific thinking pattern and the scientific thinking habit, if you like, regardless of what you're aiming for, regardless of the goal you're striving for, whether it be a personal develop, a people development one or a, a physical construction related one, that's, that's uh, what really impresses me. The Carter storyboard, um, you mentioned that. I don't suppose you'd have that up. Uh, I know you said you had a couple of images. Would that be one of them? Yes, I do. Let me see if I can find people it here. Might, have, might be interested in seeing what you mean by that. 
Okay, we're... S- <clears throat> if you haven't, then... Um, I've no, got I've a- got it. I just got to get it open here. Okay. I thought I had it open. Now I have to close it. Let me... If you haven't, Pat, we'll just go on. We've got some really good questions. Nope, I got, was- I've got it. I think I've got it. Can you see that? Uh, no, you need to hit share screen at some point. Let me see. So share and don't worry, Pat. If you haven't, it's fine. No, it's I had it open. This is disappointing because it's so it's, it seemed like you should be seeing it, but maybe you're not. No, that's okay. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, now we have it. Yep, okay, great. Well done. So what we what we did um, is we tried to take um, and make a graphic out of the five step pattern and um, the five coaching. Uh, just to be clear, it's yeah. the five coaching questions, not the yeah. four steps in the improvement card. Or it's the five coaching questions, right? And so we have. Um, so again, we just laid out um, you know the steps one, two, three, four, five. So follow the numbers. Uh, I'll tell you that the first three or four times people use this, they're frustrated because the numbers don't go right to left. But once they use it a few times, um, they get comfortable with it. And again, you know what's what's the challenge? And so we've got this is just simply a fillable PDF that we can fill this in. You know what's your current condition? You know what's the the next target condition you want to talk about? What are the obstacles? And then what are the actions or experiments you're going to take? And so we've got this is a fillable PDF. We've got uh, this is erasable marker boards in all of our conference rooms and all of our trailers. Uh, we will have an individual one for each of our employees uh, by the end of the year for their career development. Um, we've got them for for our safety challenge. We've got individual teams working on improvements on how we how we are using our planning system. Um, accounting has got some stuff how they're how they're doing cutting checks and so it's it's a way that our teams can sit down and and we started mandating it when we first rolled it out that our projects would sit down once a month and evaluate how well they conform to the requirements of our planning system and just got them in the habit of doing this and over the last three or four years we've added more things that we we show to them hey you can use this for and the career development thing will get every one of our employees having uh their own uh that that's just theirs and you know obviously supervisors have got to uh administer several for the for all of the folks that report to them but every one of our employees will have one and so we're um it's been a good tool we've changed this a couple two or three times um to uh uh take care of some the people have offered some counsel and some wisdom or some experience about what's you know how that's how it's been used um we we're learning about right now assessing the current condition is a is a big thing that's going on and and we're being more complete and and taking more time with that our people want to jump to number five so they want to take actions and that's um <clears throat> that's, and, the, that's, the, that's everyone's nature but you you believe it's a particular nature of your industry absolutely we're we're problem solvers and you um, build stuff you build things right. you get things it, done we, and it problems come on us we need to make decisions real fast well yeah maybe we do sometimes some of that's just the adrenaline and we got some adrenaline junkies that that are in our industry but we're saying hey let's assess you know why did this happen what's going on what's really the cause of something and then we can figure out then the obstacles and the actions but just just take a breath you know down here we've got it's we started with the plan do check act and we've actually changed the act to reflect uh, because the act almost encouraged us to just to do something. And so we, we changed that to say reflect, say, hey, take, just take a second, understand and digest what happened, weave that, that learning into your plan, and then, and then you can take, you can do and, and check after that again. So what you've described here, so I'm going to have um, look at a few of the questions now. So Nathan Bonds put in a question. Nathan, if you're listening, thank you very much. He said, uh, how do we make the transitional habit from training to incorporating it daily on the floor with supervisors and leads? I think you've sort of illustrated that there. What I understood you said there is 
that regardless what you're trying, what you're building over time, is regardless of the circumstance or the goal, your people are being provided with that pattern and learn and uh, learning to follow that pattern regardless of what they're working on. You said everyone's going to have one by the end of the year or have access to it. So that's sort of how that's happening. That getting that habit onto the floor without you know, just going to training classes as such. Is that a fair comment? Yeah, so we've um, we've deployed it um, in that manner, that storyboard for about two years now. And we, we've started, we've, we've been fairly patient with it. We haven't tried to jump to have everybody doing it all the time. It's been, it's been a little bit at a time. It's been, and again, it's been a team approach as opposed to a bunch of individuals. We're getting more and more to the individuals. We're getting to more and more frequency with it. And so it's, um, it's been deliberate and, and a more of a process than, which again, I'm, we're wanting it just a little bit better every, every day. And so we're trying to add a little bit more to what we're doing. And quite frankly, we're learning about a lot about how to talk about it. What's important about the different components of the, of the, um, of the five steps, um, being able to talk about the why behind all of it, um, uh, better. And so we're, we're learning as much as our people are in doing it about, um, what's important and why and, and how we use it and finding ways then for people to use it that again are, are, are in keeping with what we're doing, not something adding on top of what they're already doing. Yeah, sure. It's almost a bit, I'll just correct something I said earlier. It's almost a bit of a blend of the improvement card and the coaching card. There's a bit of each in there, isn't it? Which is yeah. Fine. Yep. There's a question from Jack, uh, sorry, Brian Wright. He's from Jack Henry. And this is going to cause us to go backwards. So uh, my timing of the question is probably not good, but I think it's an important one. And he says, what was the first experiment in your strategy? Do you remember? What happened? What did you learn? And what can you share? Sure. So um, so nine years ago when we started our lean journey, we started with an individual project. And um, <clears throat> we, we deployed our planning system. And we wanted to, and we wanted to use COT as a deployment method and an improvement method. And within about, I don't know, 45 or 60 days of, of deploying the, the planning system, we started to try to use the improvement routine. Um, and um, we had cards printed up and we talked to the, to the jobs about the job about using, using the, the cards and the, and the, the script and I'm telling you what, it was so uncomfortable and it was, it was miserable. I mean, it was just awful. We, we, it was so bad. And so we said, oh, stop, 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 stop. This is not, this is not working. Uh, we're just going to make, we're going to turn people off. And so we backed up and then it started like, okay, we need to, we need to understand this a whole lot better before we just go out and do it. We just wanted to act, right? Okay. We just wanted to act and we, we failed. And so um, we backed up. And so we, we needed to be more better educated. Coming to the Catacons was part of that. We when needed you say to we, who was we? So principally myself and Mike Caston are this consultant. Yeah. And there's a there were a couple others. We had a, a primary coach. Uh, his name was Randy Lundstrom. He's since retired. And we've got we've got a couple others now. Um, that we just needed to better appreciate what we were asking people to do. We needed to to be able to be coached to be able to coach it ourselves. If, uh, to be able to coach them. Um, and so, again, as we went to Katakan and, and, and read more about it, well, yeah, that's kind of laid out. I mean, you've got a learner, you've got a coach, you've got a coach's coach. Well, we need to be living a little of those roles and uh, to be able then to talk with our folks and then introduce it at a pace that they could take. And we experimented with some ways to do that. And this, the Kata storyboard was one of the tools that we created um, that made it visual. Our, construction where we, we like the plans we hate the specifications we like drawings we like pictures and so how do we make it uh, how to pictures we can fill in versus a bunch of text that we read sure i really love what you just said in a pace that they can take i think you've heard me say it but mark rosenthal uh, at the catacon or summit whatever it was at austin three years ago said teach to extend their knowledge threshold not demonstrate your own and that's rung in my ears ever since he said it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's such an important thing to be able to judge where people are at. And you've got to create a bit of a gap. But if you right. create, if you don't create enough of a gap, then there's no, there's no movement. 
if you create too much of a gap, it frightens people, they switch off. I think you guys, you in particular, are very, very good at judging that gap and, and it's different for different people. And I've seen you operate and I think you're very, I think that's one of the things, one of the secrets to what you're, uh, as to why this is progressing well in your organisation because you, you judge that very well. I would, I would say that uh, um, patience is important. Um, it, it, this is a process, this, this, this moves through time. It's more glacial than it is uh, wildfire. And, um, and so, you know, I've led the organization for, for a lot of years and, 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 and you gotta, you know, you always just have to have some patience because it, it, you're changing behaviors and we have a lot of problem solvers and people that probably intuitively used the pattern but they weren't disciplined around it and they would skip steps or they would just jump between things. And so we're trying to instill discipline on a bunch of, a bunch of free spirits that like to really go. And so, so you got to do that at a pace. And so, um, but when we, we, what the first project we, we deployed our planning system on was a smashing success. And so we chose those people wisely. We chose yeah, yeah. For, for some, and, and people in, in we said just trust us and try it. And in the, the biggest thing we did when we started that is we, we we tried to explain why we were doing it, why why we're asking people to to um, to change their behavior. And at the end of the day, we boiled it down to, to this. We said we just want everybody to have a good day every day. And if we can get every person that we have on all of our sites and across our company having a good day, then our supervisors will have good days and the supervisors have good days, the companies will have good days. And this is not about making more money or about anything like that. All of that will happen when our people have good days. And when we approached it from that point of view, people said, well, okay, cool. I, I want to have a good day. And so, yeah, I'll try it. And, and when they tried it, it generally worked. Now we've improvements and it's, we've had our ups and downs, but, but we started from a point of view of, of let's just make sure we're having, we're working hard to have a good day and, and, and people will join that. I think um, what you said there is important. And it, Rick, you, Rick Lamont asked the question, and I think it's sort of within, you've answered in a way, says I'm most interested from a trainer's perspective, but how do we convince clients to do the hard work? See, what I think is it's, from what I'm hearing from you, Pat, it's not necessarily the hard work but it's being very deliberate and it's being patient and it's being and sticking to a path, sticking to a path that you it, believe in. Yes. And it's, and it's, and it's talking to people about why you do it. I'm, I'm sure a number of the folks have, have seen Simon Sinek's start with the why, yeah. the why, the how, and the what, the target. And, and we, that we've, we use that. That's, um, that's on everything we do. And, and, and we start with telling people why we're doing it. Then we'll get into the how and the what. Um, and, and we, we recruit to that. This is what's important to us. This, these are the values we have. And if you, if you share those, man, this is a great place for you. And if you don't, okay, that's fine. You, I mean, yes. there, are, there are other good places for you. Um, and, and when we've, we've rolled it out, we've lost some people over the time because the discipline and the, the, the teaming and, and collaboration that, that this approach takes just wasn't for them still great, great people. Um, and so that's, um, going slowly, telling, talk to why recruit to it, review to it, reward to it. Um, and, and if it's solid, people will, people want to win. And, and all of these principles help, help people and organizations win. Sure. Um, there's a, uh, You've, there's a question from a Roger Blake says, how do you teach the frontline scientific thinking? I, it's an important question. I think we've probably answered it in the sense that you give them an, enough, enough. You, I think you've just answered it there. You give them enough knowledge to get them started, give them a pattern and coach them through it rather than jam a whole lot of stuff down their throat, throat up front. Yeah. And so we, we actually have another board that, that embeds the cutter routine and how we start our day and finish our day with our crews. And we're on iteration number 10 of that board. And so we rolled out and said, guys, we're, we're, we're wanting you to understand your work and then have a chance to talk about it. And how do we improve it for tomorrow? And we've got a picture of that. We've only got a, we've, we've yeah, got a few minutes. 
You'll yeah. we'll go two minutes over time. I apologise, people, but I, I know uh, what Pat's talking about. If he's got it handy, we'll have a quick look at that. Do you see that? No. Okay, this is... Uh, sure. Now we're seeing something. Yeah. Yes, now we see it. That's the board, yep. Yeah, so this is the 10th version. And so right here talks about what we're going to do. Um, it, it ties to our main planning board, the things they're going to need, the hazards they have, and, and action to approve our work. And so this starts to embed some of the kata routine. We go through the work then, and we then we reflect on how did it go. So what did we get done? And we, At we the built, end of the day. At the end of the day, sorry. Right. So we, plan, we kind of built in the plan, do, check, reflect. And the arrows... Here's our. Here's what we're going to do. We check what we did. We talk about the actions that we may want to improve, uh, or what happened. Uh, reflecting on the experiment we did today, did it make it better or not? What might we do tomorrow? Uh, and and uh, and then what uh, what observations do we have? And so, so these you'll see if the these uh, these are, are waste factors that that you'd, you'd find in the total production system. But when we called them wastes, our people didn't want to talk about them because they felt like they were, uh, had done something wrong. And so we simply, um, we changed it. We don't have waste and there's an opportunity to improve and move, you know, reducing waiting, reducing uh, movement, improving the work process and reducing the congestion are all basically the same waste, but we just changed the language. Now people have, are happy to talk about it. So that was one of the things we learned as we as uh, one of the one of the uh, iterations was to get rid of some of that vocabulary. And so we're upfront about guys. We don't know all this. We need you guys to help us, and we'll make it better. Um, and to, to demonstrate that how this works. And they say, okay, cool. You'll listen to us, and 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 we're doing this for you guys to have good days. And and um so anyway it's it's i think we'll finish there because that is the driver and that, that's another thing that impresses me about all, your organization is that is the driver at the end and we all benefit from that and i've benefited from that so thank you pat i really appreciate your time i know i've got got through half the questions we could keep talking and perhaps if you don't mind we might do another one of these in um, a few months time and, or oh, well, great, i guess yeah. you're going to cover it at cartercon aren't you you'll be able yeah. to expand on yeah. a lot of this stuff at cartercon Yep. Um, if if anyone wants to contact you directly, would you be mind providing that's interested in any further questions? Would you mind providing your email address? Absolutely not. So it's it's P Geary, so P G E A R Y at Storycon, S T O R Y C O N dot com. Excellent. Thanks, Pat. Really appreciate your time. Uh, once again, Lean Frontiers, thank you for giving us the platform to have this discussion. Uh, of I've benefited from it and I trust everyone else that's listening has as well. So thank you very much. Thanks, Pat. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Oscar. Yep.